Happy Monday, everybody. Monday starts the week, and we are here to make your week a profitable one through the props betting market. I'm Andy Lang from wagertalk.com. Welcome to Prop It Up. Uh, joining me, as always, my fellow prop master, Andrew McGinnis from wagertalk.com. We're going to be breaking down the Monday night football game between the Bills and the Broncos, and then we're going to talk a little bit about some look-ahead lines for next week. So uh, before we get started, guys, real quick, please hit that like button. Leave us a comment with your best bet. Uh, Andrew, that sack prop uh, that that, that uh, uh, Dean Euford left for us hit was great. It was a sack prop on Seattle. No sweat. Uh, we got a great line, great number. So, guys, please leave your comment and tell us what your best bet is for Monday Night Football. We love reading those. Um, that was a fantastic one. Hopefully, we can cash more of those. So, like button, comment button. Andrew, let's get right into it. Uh, like we always do, we start with passing props. So let's take a look at this Bills game. Um, this Bills game, Broncos. We've got Josh Allen, Russell Wilson. Are there any passing props that jump out to you? Yeah, and I just wanted to say as well, I really enjoy all the comments because in the prop betting world, there's just so many options that you can look at. I mean, you and I are, are going back and forth talking about different games. You know, giving out two or three per each game, but there's just so many to look at. So we really do appreciate everybody uh, that comments on the YouTube and hits the like button. It means a lot to us. Um, Andy, look, I told you I've been facing my fears this year with the interception props and well, I'm going to face it again with the Josh Allen to throw an interception tonight. It's minus like 135, 140. Um, but I'm interested in here. And this is a team that over their last handful of games, they have a turnover differential of minus six. A lot of that go to Josh Allen. You know, he throws a lot of, a lot of balls that he probably shouldn't. He tries to make plays out of nothing. And unfortunately, the Bills just want him to be a simple quarterback. They don't need him to be anything groundbreaking, in my opinion, with the talent they have offensively. Um, you know, I think they should be dumping it off more to some running backs and, and things like that and check down to their tight ends a little bit more. But every now and then, there's just a one big play. He tries to look downfield and it gets picked off. And I think that he's going to throw one tonight. Denver's defense has actually been kind of surprising people and stepping up and People think Denver's defense is the same as it was, you know, the first three weeks of the season, but they've changed a little bit and they have made some big plays. So I will take Josh Allen to throw an interception uh, here tonight, Monday Night Football. And it's hard to look towards uh, anything but the over on his passing attempts. You know, this is a team that hasn't been able to blow anybody out recently. They've struggled to have consistency. Um, their run game, what, it feels like it's the same. We have deja vu, Andy, from Prop It Up from last year, year prior to that. Um, no matter who they bring in, no matter who's on this team, the run game is almost inexistent. They could be up by two touchdowns. They still don't run the ball. And, you know, we see him coming off a 38 pass attempt effort last week. And this is an opportunity, I think, against this Broncos team that might catch them off guard a little bit. It might make them compete. So I would look towards that. And as far as Russell Wilson's concerned, um, I think quite the opposite. I think the Broncos will do their best to run the ball. So because of that, I would look towards actually the under on his attempts because I think that as much as I do think the Broncos could hang around here, um, I, I do talk about the completions and how long the drives are sometimes for the Bills. We'll keep the ball out of the hand for the Broncos. And when the Broncos have the opportunity, they will do their best to run the ball. So look at the under for uh, for completions um, and attempts there for, for Russ. But I'll tell you what, man, I'm starting to get into these interception props, and I'll be watching tonight hoping that Josh throws one. I mean, he's thrown a lot of them. Uh, he's, throw, he's thrown a lot of them, they, and you only need one. You only need one bad throw, a tip pass, and you're looking good. I'm looking at Russell Wilson at a beautiful price of plus 160 to throw over one and a half touchdown passes. Um, he doesn't throw a lot, but he had three touchdowns last week, and this Bills team is just giving up a lot of touchdown passes. Joe Burrow had three. Baker Mayfield had two. Mac Jones had two. So I'm with you that the volume isn't there uh, for, for Russell Wilson, but it feels like he's throwing these, and they're not they're not rushing a bunch of touchdowns this year. So I'll, I, I'm going to keep fading this Bills defense and take Russell Wilson over one and a half touchdown passes at that awesome plus 160 price. And you mentioned Josh Allen uh, on his attempts. I, I I have noted down his completions, 23 and a half. He's got 26, 31, and 27 the last three days. He's using a lot of guys like uh, um, Khalil Shakir. He's using Dalton Kincaid. Uh, it just doesn't seem like the deep ball is there. He hasn't been on the same page with Gabe Davis. Uh, 
Stephon Diggs is not catching these long ones. So he's not eating up huge chunks of yards. Feels like it's a lot lot more shorter passes. So I'm going to look to Josh Allen over his completions and Russell Wilson over his touchdown passes for the uh, passing props tonight. Let's take a look at rushing. And, uh, Andrew, real quick before we get into rushing props, guys, it is half price on all plays on Monday. So, Andrew, congratulations on your CFL. Big win again. Uh, talk about a no sweat. Um, yeah, I mean, you you had that you had the Alouettes, and the 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 best team on the field was certainly the Alouettes. So you had no problem cashing that one. What do you have up on uh, this half price Monday? Yeah, Andy, I wish I could uh, translate that five percent CFL record into the NFL because then people would really care. You know, unfortunately, people care more about the sport you're winning in rather than actually just winning in general. But uh, thank you, uh, great cup next weekend. We'll have some plays up, but. Uh, 4% play up for hockey. I haven't really had that many 4% um, recently in, in the NHL. And everyone loves the 5%, as you know. But for me, it's been mostly 2 3 or the rare 5%. So 4% best bet today in the NHL. I invite people to grab. And I do have uh, my Grey Cup selection going up this weekend. So get it early. It'll be half price today here on Half Price Monday. And looking forward to a great week, Andy. What about yourself? I just have an MMA play that is up today. I, I uh, did the video for breaking down UFC fight night, and that is the, there's a play that I just absolutely love. I had to get it up last night. So uh, that is up. It is half price. So make sure you take advantage of that, guys. Half price Monday is a, a big, big deal. So um, when you have these 4% plays in NHL that are half price, when you have my MMA best bet, we're 14-8 and eight in our last 22 plays. So we're seeing MMA really, really well. So take advantage of half price Monday. I mean, these plays are normally, you know, fifteen dollars for an MMA play, and now they're it's seven fifty. So you can't beat it. So go grab those at wagertalk.com. Um, let's talk a little bit of rushing props here, Andrew. I'll go first. I like Javante Williams over fifty four and a half. Again, just fading this Bills defense. There's only so many injuries these NFL teams, you know, can can absorb without being exposed. And I think Javante is going to be. The workhorse tonight, 52 rushing yards against the Chiefs in the first game, which is a good number against that Chiefs defense. Then 82 against the Packers. Packers, pretty weak rush defense. And then 85 against the Chiefs. This is a guy who's getting more and more of the carries. He had a ton last week. And if this game is close, which I think it is, I don't think the Broncos are going to get blown out. I picked them plus seven and a half. Uh, a week ago, I think they keep this close. They're playing better, and I don't think there's a game script where Javante, you know, and carries get you know get 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 out of the game script. So I like him to go over fifty four and a half. I'm fading this Bills defense tonight, Andrew. What do you think about rushing props in this one? Yeah, so the both uh, there's there's two like I mentioned already, kind of when I talked about the quarterback section. Um, I like unders for the Bills because, of course, I like the attempts over for Josh Allen. I feel like a lot of times when we do these primetime games, a lot of our wagers correlate, right? People can tell kind of from one segment to the next kind of what we're interested in. Um, so I haven't, I haven't really looked at anything uh, specific for the Bills, but you talked about Javante Williams, Andy. I, I love when you and I have plays that pretty much correlate, but they're not the exact same. I just like his attempts over. It's 13 and a half here. Um, and, you know, sometimes you want to look at a full season scale, right? Like how not just about the opponents, who they're playing, but just consistency. But sometimes you just have to look at the recency bias. And coming off a 27 attempt game prior to that against Green Bay, it was a 15 attempt, but 85 yards, 82 yards. They know it's been effective and they really want to control the ball on the ground. And the Bills defense has just been really shaky. They do not they struggle to tackle like honestly they they let a lot of guys break tackles break loose turn nothing into something quite often um and to can continue with the rushing props for the broncos i like the over for russell wilson actually um his number is 21 and a half and what's cool andy is that when the season started russell wilson's number was not was uh, was uh, much higher than this actually for his rushing prop and he struggled three of the last for his first four games. He was barely even pulling anything together uh, over the last four games. He's averaging 33 yards per game. And um, obviously all of those games, usually there's like one breakout rush that kind of decides the play, but that's pretty usual for a quarterback prop. But um, I think he gets going and 
to be honest, the best part about the quarterback rushing prop versus, I think, the actual attempt prop for Williams is that no matter what the game script is, let's say the Bills are up two touchdowns somehow, then you might not see Williams get as many touches and carries for, on the ground game, but it doesn't stop you from getting those yards from uh, from Russell Wilson on the ground. So I think it's a good running game opportunity here for the Broncos, and they're going to try and utilize it the best that they can. So let's get the Williams carries, and hopefully those carries result in lots of yards. I mean, if you win yours, you got to think I win mine. So, yeah, I hope uh, so. You, you would hope so. You would hope, you'd hope you get one of those situations. So let's talk a little receiving props. Um, I find this Bills team very, very difficult to look at, but one guy that does kind of stick out, and I just thought the number was really low, is uh, Khalil Shakir. I mentioned him earlier. Really surprised to see 36 and a half at, at, at the total. I I looked at fading Gabe Davis, but then, you know, Gabe Davis, you know, he'll have no catches one week, and the next week left six for 111. Stefan Diggs, you know, you never want to go against Stefan Diggs. And Dalton Kincaid, the books are all over it. They've got his receptions total at five and a half, but – I'm looking at Shakir over 36 and a half, four catches or more in three straight games, 35, 92, and 57 yards receiving in those games. We're seeing Josh Allen spread the ball out quite a bit. I was just, I, I was surprised to see this under 40. Um, it was just one I was like, wow, Khalil Shakir, he's getting, he's getting four catches a game. Surely he's going to get over that 40 yard mark. So I was happy to see 36 and a half. And you and I talk about low volume. If I find one receiving prop I like, I think I'm pretty happy with that. So um, that's going to be my favorite receiving prop. What do you like in this one? Yeah, so again, um, similar, the same player, just a little bit different. I'm just going to go with mm. receptions, Andy. I just really like that plus money. Three and a half to the over for him at plus 125. The number for Shakir has been at two and a half for the past few weeks, but he hasn't just been surpassing that by one reception. He has been getting it by uh, a couple uh, each time. And it just kind of seems like he's become almost the um, you know, Mr. Reliable, so to speak, for Josh Allen. Look, he's not making groundbreaking plays, right? He's not blowing anybody out of the water with these athletic, you know, 40-yard dash type plays. But that's what you want to look for. And like I said, if you have a, a quarterback like Josh Allen throwing the ball as much as he really is, you want to find kind of you know, the low hanging fruit to be able to look at these receptions prop. And I love that I'm getting plus money on this at plus 125 looking at here. And you talk about Gabe Davis, right? I love it was almost like an accidental segue because you talked about, you know, sometimes you could take his under on receiving yards. The guy has one reception going into the fourth quarter and he catches a 40 yard touchdown, right? I think the under two and a half at plus money is really good. I'm taking two plus money reception props here. We got plus 125 for Shakir over, and I got plus 140 under two and a half receptions for Gabe Davis. So if I split those, we make a little bit of profit, um, but I got a good feeling we can go two and out here. Gabe Davis seems like he's either making a big play like once a game or he's just not getting the ball at all. So uh, this time going with the receptions here, Andy. Love it, guys. Hit the like button again. Leave us a comment. Tell us your best play for Monday Night Football. Uh, we said had a great cash on that sack prop in the Seattle Seahawks game. That got sent in from a viewer. So make sure you hit the like button and leave us your best prop. Love going over those and seeing what everyone's on tonight. We always like to try and look ahead and see what props that uh, we like for next week. So, Andrew, when you're looking ahead uh, to next week, week 11, is anything jumping off the page that you're hoping to see that we can cash on? Yeah, Andy, I'm looking to fade uh, Josh Jacobs going into this week against the Miami Dolphins. I think uh, maybe they smoked a little bit uh, too many cigars and they're going to forget about how great the Miami Dolphins are after celebrating the, the Raiders two wins. Look, you, it's the typical angle where you fire the coach, you get rid of the GM, and then you have two very favorable matchups. I think everybody at Wager Talk would agree that uh, the Raiders have certainly had some advantageous matchups moving forward since they got rid of their coach. And then how here you have a rested Miami Dolphins team. So the thing is, this Raiders team looks good when they're playing other teams that don't have you know high-powered offenses. They can run the ball and control the clock and check down, check down, check down. When they play a team like Miami, they're not going to be able to run the ball. They're going to have to try and make plays downfield. And it's just not going to look very good. So uh, that's one that I was looking at there. Um, next week, I'm looking at um, Trevor Lawrence over one and a half passing touchdowns. He's had a really good track record after responding against um, uh, after tough games. And realistically, he's someone that really shines when he plays bottom feeders. And I'm not saying that Tennessee is just the worst team in the league by any means, but 
Uh, their defense has been really shaky this year, giving up big plays every single week. And um, I think that he'll bounce back in a big way and his receivers couldn't get going. They'll want to get right back on track. And um, lastly, the only other one I looked at was chargers and Packers and man, people can say what they want. And, and, and I can really stress, you know, how bad the defense is for the chargers, but I, I'm starting to join people on the Justin Herbert kind of club where it's like, Hey man, you also have to do some stuff yourself. Like it's, it's, there's two sides to it, right? There's like, Hey, this team's defense sucks, but also this quarterback can't stop making any mistakes. So, um, I'm going to go with the Packers team total. If I get a good price here, Andy, I mean, they're going to go from a game against the Steelers against the chargers and nobody can call me biased because I'm a Packers fan. Okay. I literally almost threw my remote at the TV when I saw Jordan love throw back to back INTs in their, in their last two drives. Okay. I get it, but you're going from a Steelers defense with a really impressive pass rush with a good secondary. And now you get a chance to play this chargers team that, Let's look back on the year. Whenever anybody thinks this is a good week for the Chargers, this is a bet on week for the Chargers, this is a week they should put some points up, they are the team that's allowing points. So I'm very curious to see what the team total comes out to be and what the consistent number is at most books. But um, I think that it'll be a decent week for the Packers. And if the Chargers can stop the Packers, then uh, look, I'll just I'll give them a break for a little while. But uh, hopefully they, they, if they can put up points on anybody, I hope it can be the, the Chargers. I'm with you. I have Jordan Love over his passing total. Uh, Chargers, again, let a quarterback go over his passing total. That's every quarterback this year. I mean, it's the streak that keeps on giving. Just take the opposing uh, team's quarterback and against the Chargers, and they're the worst pass defense. They're terrible. And I, I like the combo of, of Jared Goff and Amon Ross St. Brown. Um, I would hope to get a similar number, like 277 and a half. That's what it was this week. And uh, Monroe St. Brown, you're probably going to get 90 yards. Who cares? I'll take it. Against the Bears? Absolutely. Bears, another one of these teams, bad against the pass, pretty good against the run. And then I'm not going to overthink it. This Cowboys team, Andrew, I mean, talk about the definition of a front runner. I mean, just, just ridiculous. Piling on all the stats against the Giants, and now they get the Panthers. And guess what? They're going to do it again. I'm just give me give me Dak Prescott over his passing yards. If they're up thirty, that means it's go time. Like I, I the only thing they were missing was the hurry up offense when they were up, you know, thirty five points. That was, that was the only thing that they didn't do yesterday. And I'm going to take a rushing prop, and it sure isn't going to be Tony Pollard. It's going to be Rico Dowdle. I, I even talked about it Sunday morning. His total was twenty and a half, and I was like, against the Giants, of of course they're going to give him a bunch of carries and he blew through his total. I hope he gets, I, I hope we get like a 23 and a half rushing total because I think just by hook or by crook, he's going to get enough carries to get there. The Panthers rush defense has shown decent little glimpses. Um, but I, I think Dowdle comes in when, when the, the defense is softened up and he gets the nice little rushing total. So I'm taking Dak over passing. I'm taking Dowdle over rushing and you might as well just throw CD lamb in, over his over his receiving because they're yeah because they're just they're gonna keep doing this against these bad teams. I mean, have, <laughs> they have not shown any reason that we shouldn't just take all of the Cowboys props in these games where they're big favorites. This is the isn't this their bread and butter? Giants than the Panthers is like they love this stuff, don't they? Oh my god, like it's unbelievable. Like so. Every single Sunday night, okay, I have, we have like a family dinner. I'm with my my girlfriend's brother, and he doesn't really gamble, but he loves fantasy. He talks about his fantasy football team. So he's he's always updating me on the guys for his fantasy. And you know what it reminds me of, Andy, when when you were talking with Teddy that day and Wager talked today about keeping it simple, right? So he's looking at me, guys. I hope you made some props today on CD Lamb. I hope you took prop bets on this guy. And I'm like, I didn't, but I, I should have. My head's going to fall off. I know. because. <laughs> You look at fantasy sometimes you and like we do this show and we're on Friday. We're giving out like a hundred props on all these games. And then the guy that gets like 15 receptions and 150 yards a game the past four weeks. And I'm thinking to myself, why didn't I give that out? And, and, you know, as much as I make fun of Dak Prescott and have my fun with him, you hit it right on the head. He's amazing in games like that. He will not. And the Dallas Cowboys coaching staff, we always talk about it with uh, NCAA football. The coaching staff does not care either. They want to make no. it's almost like they have the alternate spreads. They want to win by like 40. <laughs> <laughs> 
they, they, they want yeah. to run the score up. That's great. That that is great. Yeah, the Cowboys they have the they have the same like same game parlays like Dak over receiving, <laughs> yeah. Rico Dowdle over rushing, C D Lamb, and, and the Cowboys minus twenty eight and a half. Uh, yeah, that's that's how Jerry pays for that stadium. For the stadium, <laughs> yeah. Same game parlays against the terrible teams. against the Giants against the Giants. <laughs> Uh, and then he, and then he throws uh, he, he throws in Dak to get a pick whenever they play a good team. Actually, no, he still yeah. threw one yesterday. He still, he still threw one yesterday too. Actually, <laughs> uh, we see you, Jerry. We know you're not fooling anybody. We we know what you're yeah. doing. Uh, that's great. So funny. So funny. So uh, yeah, that's the se- that's a secret to uh to the Cowboys payroll. Same game parlays <laughs> against the Giants. <laughs> Oh, great stuff, Andrew. Um, guys, go ahead and hit that like button and uh, leave a comment. And Andrew, one more time, uh, tell them what you have up. It's half price Monday, guys. Take advantage of it. Andrew's got a 4% play. Uh, what do you have up at wagertalk.com? Yeah, Andy, totals have been the name of the game for me. I have uh, struggled with some of the side plays to start the NHL season, but I uh, have a team total play up for the small slate for half price Monday. 4% play. I invite everybody to check it out with me. Uh, it'll be probably just one prop play in the NFL tonight. If that changes, you'll see me uh, tweeting it. And uh, follow me on Twitter, at McGinnis Picks. All kinds of free plays are out there as well. And Andy, I want to tip my hat to uh, all the free plays you've been doing, man, across the NFL, all the different shows that you're on. Uh, people should definitely follow you on Twitter if they aren't already as well. Appreciate it. It is a prop show, so real quick. Uh, I'll, I'll take my medicine. I, I, I know... William Nylander had a point. Uh, I know he had multiple points. <laughs> you and I talked about it on puck time. Uh, his streak is incredible guys. If you have not been following it, um, Nylander for the Maple Leafs, he has at least one point in every single game this season. I thought Saturday would be the game that he breaks a streak and he didn't. Uh, I mean, early point it was no, I mean, it was, it was, a, it was no sweat. And you look at his schedule, Andrew, it's good. I think he's, I think he's, I think he's going to really, really extend this streak. The Leafs are, are are scoring a lot of goals, and their defense isn't great, so they, they get in these shootout games. I don't know, man. Is this like an amazing parlay piece for like the next week or so? I think it is. Uh, you know, the funny thing is Nylander is up for a contract extension this coming year, right? So Leaf fans are bittersweet about it because – the, the better he plays, the more they realize they are not going to be able to afford him at the end of the season because of their salary cap issues. <laughs> but right now, they're happy to see him playing really well. So, no, I certainly agree. He's definitely a good parlay piece there. And, and um, you know, he wasn't always known for being a good passer. So if some people don't love that big juice, you can take the specific assist prop. And I would look a, take a look at that because, of course, he is scoring goals, Andy, but a lot of those points are assists as well. So, um yeah, maybe on these yeah. Monday shows we can start mixing in a little bit of other sports because there's so much going on now, right? Yeah, and I, I bring them up because I, I, I've been low volume in NHL, but I'm 11 and 5. So awesome. uh, picking these spots have been great. So I don't have a ton of NHL plays up. I probably won't have one up tonight. But when you see that I have one up, it's a really, really good, confident play. So, you know, make sure you grab it. And I'll be honest, I, I've been taking advantage of these guys to not have points. I've been looking at some of these guys at reasonable prices on bad teams to not have points, and it's worked out really well. We're we're five and zero in our last five plays, so we're like looking to extend the streak, and it's all been plays on guys not to have points. There's a ton of value in that market. So, yeah, on Mondays, absolutely, we can talk about some of these props. I mean, it is, it is a prop show, and who cares what sport? Right? As long as you're cashing in it, <laughs> who cares about it? So. Um, yeah, yeah. I, listen, you could look at Connor McDavid, and you're you know you're paying like minus a thousand for him to have a point. Nylander, what minus three hundred? That you're getting such a discount on it. It feels like the books haven't haven't totally caught up on it. I know his points are one and a half on some books, but you can grab the alt line just to have a point at some of the books. So, yeah, that was fun. that was that was funny on Saturday. I, I I'll be honest, I chickened out. I didn't even put it in on Wager Talk. I, I just like he had he had three points on Friday and I was like I can't go against this guy. <laughs> so, all right, guys, well, that's going to do it. Were Andy on, on McDavid to not to not get a point, like because because there's books that offer zero point five or one point five for him, right? And there was like a string of games where looking. he wasn't even getting a point. That's incredible. I I looked hard at playing him not to have one and a half points because Dra- DraftKings has him one and a half points. I almost looked at him under. He doesn't look right. 
a team doesn't look right, but I, I don't know. Coaching, the coaching changes and everything. I'm sure you're going to go over it on, on puck time. I, I kind of feel like it's a stay away team right now. Who knows if they get reinvigorated, but to me, McDavid just doesn't look completely healthy. So, I mean, I, I don't know. Sometimes these guys, I mean, you're never going to tell a professional athlete not to play, but when you come back hurt, are you really doing your team? Uh, you know, uh, uh, do you know what I mean? Like, is oh, he really sure. helping his team out or or not i don't know i don't know um so so anyway guys that's going to do it for prop it up let's have a really good uh monday night football and make sure you check out andrew on puck time i will be on puck time with andrew on friday and uh take advantage of half price monday guys i've got an mma play that is up right now absolutely love it andrew's got a four percent nhl play so let's kick off the week right cash some of these half price monday plays good luck on all your plays everyone and we will be back friday to break down all of the sunday games for nfl week 11 we'll see you on friday morning on prop it up